Well, hello there and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to do raw MongoDB queries in Loopback. Now, Loopback is awesome and everything and don't get me wrong, there's uh, seems like there's an end point for everything. But there are instances where you may want to do a raw query. For example, update many. There's nothing I can see on the API that can handle that. So I thought it would be of value if we did a video covering that. Now, by the way, I apologize for the delay between some of these. Um, I was looking through previous videos and I know that I spent a lot of time going over async await and I was talking about denormalization and how I happen to think that denormalization is the future and all of that stuff. Now, having had a couple of weeks to think over this stuff, don't get me wrong, it's it's fine. I'm happy, I'm delighted, but I actually, that was my phone, I apologise for that. I don't think it's necessary in this instance to go as crazy as this. So this is actually going to be a lot more simple than what we first bargained for. However, I will keep these videos up because I think it's good to know about async await and how to use that stuff and uh, we'll definitely use our little operation hook here. So, with a slight change of plan, let's go ahead now and do a raw query from loopback, okay? So, uh, what I'd like to do to, uh, to kick things off is I'm going to say console.log context. There's something that I would like to show you and it's to do with this context object, okay? So do that and say save. And then let's start up the server. And I'm going to go into loopback. I'll hit refresh here. And I'm going to go into member when this loads up. And I'll just do an ordinary update, okay? So we'll just do something like um, where username is Chico. And I'll just say picture is going to be pick. Okay, so just an ordinary update here. Try it out. Okay, now brace yourself. Look at all this stuff. This is the context object and as you can see it's absolutely giant, okay? However, the part that we're interested in is right down the bottom here. We've got two sections. There's one called where. Can you see that? And then we've got another called data. This is going to be very, very useful to us. So what I'm going to do is inside, I'll, well, I'll comment this out, right? But inside here, I'm going to say var where condition equals context dot where, okay? So that's going to give us this part here, this object that's got a property or, uh, that's set to the value of pick, right? Uh, pardon me, username. It's the one upstairs. It's the where, okay? I know that you knew that. Okay, there we go. So that's that, right? I'm going to do the same here with another variable and I'll call it new data and I'll say that that's context dot data and as you can imagine that's bringing us this thing here, okay? So, that's something. Now I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to make a brand new function, a very simple JavaScript one actually, and I'll call it function update other model. Okay, I could have called it update other collection. In fact, I think I will. Let's go with update other collection, okay? It's going to take in three variables. We're going to have collection name, we're going to have where condition and we're going to have new data just like that, okay? Nice and simple. And the idea is we'll have a raw MongoDB query in here. So let's take a little trip to Google. If you do a search for Mongo update query, you'll find somewhere here that's got dollar sign set in the documentation. The Mongo documentation is actually not too bad, you know, as far as documentation goes. Anyway, scroll down about halfway down the page and you'll see a nice example 
of what an update query looks like, okay? So let's copy that and we'll take it across and we'll just paste in and then tidy up a little bit. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is not much use because we don't have products and IDs and all of that stuff. Well, actually, it's even worse than that. We need to connect to the data source and to our Mongo database. We can do that with just three simple lines of code. They are as follows. We say var app equals require, and then we're going to say in brackets, we're going to say dot dot slash dot dot slash server forward slash server. Then we're going to say var db equals app dot data sources, look out for that capital S dot db. Finally, we're going to say var collection equals db dot connector dot collection and then in brackets we're going to say collection name. Okay, now I know that this is a change of plan from what I was talking about last time, but I think this is easier and there are definitely times where it, it's kind of nice to just know how to do raw queries. They can sometimes come in handy, you know. So that's us now hooked up to the Mongo database. Those three lines is all we need, okay. Now it's just a case of tweaking this query and we're all going to be fine. So, we've now got this collection thing here. We're going to take this db.products out and replace it with collection. And when we pass in the collection name, this is going to know exactly what that means and exactly what to do, you know. Now, this part here is the where condition. Remember, folks, we are already passing in a nice perfectly formatted where condition. We got it from the context object. So we can just go in here and say where condition. And again, we can even simplify here. This is the data, right? We can take this out and say new data. And that is pretty, pretty cool. I'm well pleased with this. Now there is one more tweak that we do need to do, which is to jump in here do a little comma, head down one, and then we want to say uh, curly bracket, multi colon true, okay? Um, <laughs> finding this out was not easy. I was testing it earlier on and it was only updating one document and it was, it was really cracking me up and I couldn't figure out why. Well, it turns out you've got to add this in. So that means it's going to update all of the collections that happen to match the where condition. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the vibe. And that is a really nice little function. Look how compact that function is. Look how adaptable it is. Look how simple. This is fantastic. And we can use this to update any collection. As a matter of fact, we are not even tethered to any particular properties or anything. We can change the where condition, we can change the data. It's all fantastic. So now, if we scroll back downstairs again, maybe I should bring this up here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to invoke our update other collection function by pasting in like so. And we need to add in a collection name, of course. So in this case, I'll use comment, right? We've got a, a model in there, or a collection, both actually called comment. So that should be that. And in fact, just to show off, I'll say console.log all is well. Okay, so save that. And let's give this a try. Okay, here we go. So I'm now heading in to member and I'm heading into update and I'm going to say where username is Chico and I'm going to set the data to picture 
And just so that we know that this has been changed, we'll say something like super duper picture, right? Just something that we've never used before. And I'll say submit or try it out. Everything looks normal. Now I'm going to go up to comment here. And actually, I'll have a quick peep at the terminal. Everything looks good, okay? So, having a look at comments here. And I'm going to say try it out. And as we can see, where we have the username of Chico, the picture has been changed to super duper picture. Okay, end of lesson. That's that. Now, if anybody has just watched that and they're thinking, well, this has nothing to do with the async await stuff and all of that, let me just say it's actually not as disjointed as you may think because if you remember that, lesson back on part 18, it does invoke a string of functions and what I was saying at the time was that, that if you had multiple collections that needed updated, you would do them all one at a time. So here I, I was using the most basic example, get first name, last name, etc. And then I was using async await to go through them all. So you could use the function that we've just made, it would work perfectly in fact in a scenario where you had lots of collections that needed updated, you know? So I'm giving you the most basic example possible and I'm kind of giving you a rough outline of a way that you could use this if you had lots of things that needed done, let's say, when an operation hook was fired, you know? So I hope that's useful and um, thank you. <laughs> now, folks, there's only... A couple more things that I wanted to show you and that would be us finished. I wanted to go over validation like server side validation and I wanted to go over probably some security stuff. However, uh, and I'm speaking to you at the start of January here, I'm gonna have to leave this for a few weeks. So don't get me wrong, I, I, I'll come back to it in a few weeks time but I've been telling the people at the Insider Club that I'm going to do a new video series at the start of January and it's on the calendar and they're all going to go crazy if I don't put this other thing out, you know. So for the next three weeks, I'm going to be talking about some other stuff. I hope you'll enjoy that. And then I'm going to come back and finish this. If you cannot wait a few weeks, then you're welcome to ask me any questions you want on the Insider Club discussion forum. It's at insiderclub.org. So that's us for now. I'll be talking about something else for the next few weeks, but then I'll come back to this uh, in a few weeks' time. Thank you very much. Stay cool. And by the way, I hope you have a fantastic new year. <laughs>